Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. So I'm back with my uh, review of the Thinkware X800 dash cam and also its multiplexer attachment and it, uh, three of uh, the optional cameras. It has side cameras and a rear camera. You can actually put up to four cameras on the multiplexer box. Anyway, what I'll do is I'll give you a quick look at the cameras. Um, if you missed the install, I did it uh, about a month or so ago. I'll link back to that. But let's just give you a look at the inst the cameras installed on the the Ram 3500 truck and then we'll get to some footage of uh, it in action and then I'll come back with my pros and cons now that I've used it a while. Inside the front window we have the front facing camera and it's uh, mounted on 3M tape. You can see a second dash cam there that's the X800 Pro that I've been using for about a year or so. I left it in at the same time and in this video I'll give you some actual comparison footage. So we got the front facing cam there in the windshield and then there's a little multiplexer box that I can plug extra cameras in. So we have side cameras, you can see one here. That'll show footage whatever's happening on the side of the truck. And then around back I also have a rear facing infrared camera that I chose to mount on the bumper down there. Go back around here and you can see the other side camera, passenger side camera right down there. And I'll give you a quick look inside here. Oh, they're mounted on the windshield. There we go, that's the X800 right there. You can see the Q800 Pro is back there. This is basically the one I'm reviewing. And then it has a, a small touch screen. It also has the optional uh, GPS accessory up there. Anyway, like I said, I'll link back to the install. It was all wired, hardwired in under the dash there and I was able to hide all the wires. So it ended up to be a pretty good installation. And I also, in fact, a little mod. You see I have a solar panel here, so I put a battery and a charger inside that toolbox and I hooked up the hardwire kit to it, so I have an ex external battery that uh, takes care of powering the dash cam when the truck is not on, so that's pretty cool. I'll show a little video of that too. Anyway, let's get to it. Uh, before we get to the footage, let's go through some of the features and specs for the X800 dash cam. So the front dash cam is a 2K, what they call QHD, which is 2560 by 1440 at 30 frames per second. It has a Sony Exmor R Starvis sensor in it, 5.14 megapixels. Uh, the display size is 2.7 inches, wide viewing angle, 150 degrees, has a super night vision 2.0, uh, road safety warning systems, safety camera alerts, so it'll, it'll let you know if you're coming up to a red light camera or a uh, speed zone and those things get downloaded. You can, uh, you can re-download uh, as they update the, the database. Uh, parking surveillance mode, you got motion and impact detection, time lapse and energy saving mode. Uh, you can add an external GPS that'll give you the speed out what your what your speed is and also it's needed for the, the safety alerts. Uh, it's compatible with the multiplexer box which I installed. Uh, not all their dash cams are compatible like my Q800 Pro camera isn't but this one is. Uh, advanced video clear technology super capacitor so I guess rather than having a battery in there they use a, a capacitor instead for memory memory uh, integrated thermal protection so if it gets too hot it can protect itself and shut down anti-file corruption for the SD card supports micro SD cards up to 128 gigabytes and you also get a PC viewer where you can view the video right on your computer some of the specs here. The rear spec uh, isn't as the resolution isn't as high. It's just your normal full HD 1080p uh, dimensions there for you. Blah blah blah. Sort of the same thing. Anyway, well, let's get uh, to the footage for you.
So this is the front view on a pretty clear sunny day, uh, not going into the sun, away from the sun. You can see everything looks pretty clear. You can read the signs. Of course, the cars ahead of you, you're, once they're out of a certain distance, you're not going to be able to read the license plate just because it's quite the fisheye camera, so it can have the really wide angle view. So everything in the middle gets quite, kind of squished, but pretty decent. Now we'll switch over to the the three other cameras. You can see both side views as I'm going down the freeway. Uh, notice the rear camera is a little bit darker and a little bit uh, different color balance. I'll discuss that later. That was one uh, sort of flaw I found in, in the system so far in my testing. And here we go. We're coming through. What can I do here? Oh, this is the red light camera, yeah. So that warns you that it, that the red light is coming up. Also does speed speed cameras too. And here's some footage of the parking monitor. So it's it's uh, going 24 hours a day. I have it in time lapse mode, and it uh, will pick up through all the cameras, people moving around, or cars moving around, or if someone hits you, it's going to set off. That's actually at our RV park. Here's another one when I was on a ferry, I went to visit my mom this past weekend. It was her 80th birthday. So I thought that would be a good chance to show it off in kind of a parking situation. You can see it's picking up all the all the different people that are going around, what they're doing. Tell me if anybody smacks their door against me. And this is actually at my mom's place. There's my lovely mother. <laughs> this is when I was just leaving, saying goodbye to her. But it gives you an indication of what the the parking stuff will pick up. And here's a freeze frame, kind of give you an indication what the cameras can pick up and if someone's doing something, what kind of resolution you'll get. If you catch them in the act. And here's a test of the sound pickup, just Ann and I talking. Ann's voice is going to be louder because she's closer to the camera. Ann is my wife, by the way. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the sun decks are nice, but I still want a big swim platform. See, yeah, this troller looks Special nice Special order, it's called. Saddle wash. Oh, no, this one has bikes on top. Rejoice. Rejoice. Look at it. That was the name of the tall ship. And next is a parking incident. When I slam the door, it sets off the alarm. And then that is recorded. And then this is a comparison. Um, just while I'm boarding the ferry, I thought I'd give you a look at both cameras. So on the top, you can see the X800 and its cameras. The bottom is the X800 Pro. And I actually have the rear camera for it as well. So pretty good. You can see when it's going through the windshield, my uh, Ram truck is quite a slanted type windshield. So you do get quite a bit of reflection sometimes just depending on sun angle. The rear actually ends up always being pretty good, I find, because it's the cameras are actually out in the open, so they don't have any windshield. Well, the bottom one is right against the back windshield, the bottom right hand. But anyway, all looks pretty good. I like when it goes on the ferry here. It's able to adjust for the different lighting situation quite quickly. And then this is really hard on cameras is when you have bright light on one side and dark on the other. And I think the it does a really good job. That's quite the good dynamic range here. This is a really hard test for most cameras. And then this is the little squares blowing up. I use some software, so that's the full size of the little quarter part of the picture that I've blown up each of the cameras. So it's not too bad. The resolution isn't as good, obviously, because it's only a quarter of an HD. But you know, if you had an accident or something, it could be useful for sure.
Then we have some night driving, just to show off how it looks at the night time. Same thing, it's having to deal with a lot of bright lights and then dark areas. So it does a pretty good job as well. I guess it has that uh, nice Sony Starvis lens. It's always really good at, at night. Give you the forward facing camera first and then we'll show you some uh, rear facing. It's having a little more trouble because of uh, the lights straight behind it. And finally, a quick look at the little mod. I made a solar-powered uh, system to, to use for the parking monitor power when the truck is off. So I put a, a lithium battery down below and I have a solar charger in there. So I have the constant power hooked to it. So every day the, the solar power recharges that battery. And then, then at night time when there's no solar, the battery keeps the power going to my dash cam. So I'm not affecting my truck batteries at all. Although it does have uh, settings so that you can, it'll turn off automatically. You can set it for voltages and in the winter time you can set it for winter settings. So it does have battery protection. This is just a, a way that I don't even have to worry about that at all. They also have a uh, battery pack you can buy. They make their own lithium battery pack to, to help power the, the dash cams. I'll show that in a few minutes here. Anyway, I just thought this would be of interest to, to some people that uh, might be looking at uh, doing okay, something similar. Okay, let's go through some of the pros and cons as I see them for this uh, system. Uh, the X800 dash cam has a touch screen for uh, playback and setup, that sort of thing. So for people that aren't into using an app in their smartphone, that's uh, quite a straightforward thing to use. So some people might like that versus versus a, a app thing that does a dash cam that doesn't have a screen. It's also expandable for the multicam operation up to four cameras. So you got the dash cam and you can add four more cameras, you know, side cameras, rear cameras, interior cameras, that sort of thing. Uh, I found the multi-camera system easy to install. If you have any sort of 12 volt uh, power knowledge in vehicles, it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, I soldered mine in, but you can use different types of connections. And the, the Thinkware has a video where it shows you how to put it into your fuse box. There's just so many variables in, vi in different vehicles, but basically you're just going to find power, um, accessory power, and then for the parking um, setup, you want to find a constant power. Uh, that parking monitor works really well. I'm really impressed with it. That's kind of like the gold star thing for, for the Thinkware is they really have a good parking monitor. Um, time lapse or motion detect. I kind of like the 24-hour the time lapse. It just takes a, a thing every two seconds. So you can see the security all around your vehicle. Uh, good video resolution on the front dash cam. I believe it's 2K, which is about 2,540 pixels by something I believe so it has a pretty clear picture on the front um, really sleek looking metal side cameras really pleasing appearance here and they they blend in well to the vehicle uh, the rear camera comes with plenty of cables 60 meters for your long RV installations like a big long motorhome or something like that and also Thinkware has a uh, good US and Canada online support and they even have quite a few help videos there um, versus, you know, some of the, the cameras you could buy off Amazon, you're kind of just stuck to whatever, maybe some email support or something like that. Uh, what about the cons? Uh, the multiplex camera video only, the way it works, you're only going to show a quarter of the screen and it's only HD, like 1080p. So uh, when you start sh trying to see what's happening on that little corner of the screen, it can be a little, start to get a little blurry. Uh, the automatic driver assist system is kind of erratic for me. I don't know if maybe if with my truck. The lane departure warning works fine every time, but sometimes the, the, the kind of when the car moves away and it's supposed to give a little ding, that's kind of 50-50 for me. 
So I've always found those a little little funny. Maybe it's my truck is really high or something like that. Uh, the infrared camera I had, the video looked a little dark and at times kind of yellowed. And there's because it's part of the multiplexer, there wasn't any really adjustment for that. Um, I, I told Thinkware about that and they said they can a, adjust the, the internal the internal settings on that uh, in the future. And then the marks, max parking mode time is 48 hours, which is fine, um, you know, because usually you're hooked to your vehicle battery. But in my case, I hooked it to a, an external battery that's rechargeable through a solar panel. So I asked if I could increase that. And they say at this time, there's no way to increase that time period. Uh, what else we got here? If you want to look at uh, my previous review on the on the Q800 Pro, um, I'll give you a link to that. I did quite a comprehensive review and also came back after a, a six month time and updated you on that. And I'll also link to the full installation of this X800 multicam system. Um, and also my my truck toolbox solar power mod that I did to provide parking monitor power just so that it's not it's not running off when my, the truck is off it's not running off my batteries at all it's uh, using this this external battery and I'll link to uh, some footage I have I've been collecting dash cam footage on my journey so you can kind of go through those videos if you want to see different uh, examples of the dash cam working and also i did the tr i did the the external battery but uh thinkware does have an external uh, mini battery system you can buy for the hard wire if you don't want to risk your your uh, vehicle battery running down or anything like if you set the settings on your vehicle battery it should be okay but you know this is just an extra way to uh to assure that your vehicle battery is not running when the vehicle is off Anyway, so far so good with the, the Thinkware. I'll uh, continue uh, using it, and if I have any issues with it, I'll, I'll come back in the future and let you know. Till next time, Ray from loveyrv.com. Cheers, everyone.